uh, good morning students in uh, yesterday's class we learned uh, different ways of uh, representing knowledge uh, we started with the relational method this relational method in which the knowledge is uh, stored as a table next uh, method was um, uh, representing knowledge as a logic we learned already uh, predicate and uh, propositional logic so predicate logic we can represent uh, this knowledge in this form uh, followed by the third method which is uh, representing knowledge uh, in the form of a procedure okay procedure this is third one uh, next was uh, semantic network knowledge representation using semantic network this semantic network is like a tree this this one this is semantic network this is also a semantic network with that paragraph we could uh, uh, create a semantic network and uh, this is a representation of uh, that network in prolog today in today's class we will look at extended semantic networks for knowledge representation all right extended semantic network in the logic as well as uh, semantic networks we looked at how knowledge knowledge it can be any information for instance all humans are mortal what is this this is some kind of knowledge and how did we represent this this was represented in the form of a logic and next uh, we looked at a semantic network where we saw different uh, uh, concepts or entities like uh, living things which has got uh, humans animals birds as you know, their uh, Success, uh, uh, no types, and then um, they they have got some properties like this. This is semantic network. Human, uh, uh, Mike is a human. John is a human. E here represents some event. Okay, E, uh, an event. A recipient is. Mike, look at the sentences here. John gives an apple to Mike. John and Mike are humans. John gives an apple to Mike. This is one statement. Another statement is john and mike are human how can you represent this in the form of semantic net in semantic net um, the super class would be human okay uh, super class would be human Mike is a human. This is a relationship. Is a. This is subclass. Actually, it should be instance. Instance uh, rather a class. Mike is an instance of human. Uh, anyway, here it is denoted in this manner. John is a human. And there is an event. What is that event? Um, John gives an apple, means John is the actor. From here to here, 
it denotes the second statement john and mike are humans the second statement is denoted in this manner the first statement is represented here john is the actor apple is the object and e is the event in which uh, mike is a recipient and the action is give uh, john gives an apple to mike is represented in this manner from here to here what what it says john is performing an action so john is an actor the uh, the action on which john performs uh, is apple which is an object the recipient of that object is mike the action which john has performed is give this way this knowledge has been coded into semantic net from this one should be able to understand that uh, knowledge any information any statement any truth any fact can be uh, represented or denoted in the form of a uh, graph or tree in this manner okay the whatever here is given is uh, already explained e is an object uh, no apple is an object of event e uh, give is the action of event e john is the actor of event e mike is the recipient of event e john is a human mike is a human this we can draw, write in clausal form this, this is known as clausal form that that uh, relations are uh, shown in semantic net is expressed in clausal form in this manner all right uh, using predicate logic how can we represent that same statement you know in predicate logic uh, we have got uh, uh, variables, functions, predicates, and these operators. First one is that gives. Who gives what? All right. Who gives what? Here, John gives Mike and Apple. Here it is shown. John gives mike and apple this predicate relation have an argument see here it has got three arguments a john comma mike comma apple john gives mike and apple this is a predicate relation this is predicate this is first order predicate logic. This one is also a way of representing the um, knowledge. Now, uh, there is another sentence that has been added to this, which, which says, John gives an apple to everyone he likes. What uh, um, changes have to be made to this predicate in order to incorporate the second sentence, which is John gives an apple to everyone he likes. What it shows, what does it shows that uh, John is giving a, a apple to Mike because he likes. That thing we have to show now. To show that, we also have to have what some kind of operator connect that connects because it is if here if he likes this is just normal simple sentence which says that john gives an apple to mike here there is no if else uh, no condition a, a normal statement 
when it comes to the second sentence it has a condition sort of thing what is the condition john gives an apple to everyone he likes if he likes only if he likes he gives an apple otherwise he won't give that is the uh, implicit meaning in this sentence how to express that give john in in place of my here we are putting x x is a variable in this variable uh, any uh, name or any uh, recipient would be uh, uh, you know substituted in this place whenever it satisfies the condition that john likes that x apple remains as it is john gives x an apple when he gives x an apple here this one is uh, implied by the connective implied by likes john or comma x if john likes x if this condition is true then this one is executed it, it, it's it's like that this is the conclusion uh, this uh, operator this implies this is implies this is implied by in uh, forward direction it is implies in backward direction it is implied by and whatever is there uh, at the left of uh, this uh, implied by is known as the conclusion and this is the condition this right side is the condition if this condition uh, meets this conclusion happens all right uh, consider an example in which we have three array relationship representing this to capture additional information about kitchen in the sentence we would have to replace three array representation with a four uh, array representation what 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 is the meaning of this statement is john gives mike an apple the, the, the uh, here we are denoting the sentence which has three parameters what are the three parameters john the actor mike the recipient apple the um, the object give the action for action give these are the three uh, arguments consider that one more argument has to be added john gave an apple to mike in the kitchen if this in the kitchen has to be added to this predicate three argument predicate is not adequate we have to go for four fourth uh, argument has to be added and we have to go for four array relationship or representation which says that john gives the mic an apple in the kitchen all right this is uh this sentence if john gives something he likes to a person uh, in place of apple you are putting something means another variable y then he also likes that person how to express that in causal form in logic john likes x john likes x is the conclusion conclusion of what condition first condition is john give x uh, the object y and john likes y uh, 
John likes Y. Okay, here X is Apple, Y is uh, because John likes X. If John gives something he likes to a person, then he also likes that person. Okay, so uh, why, uh, something is Y only. Something is Y and John gives X. Uh, 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 the, the object Y implies that, means uh, the conclusion is John likes X. Here, he also likes that person. John likes X. The sentence every human is either male or female is expressed by the following clause. X is a male, X is female. It means X can be male, X can be female. In, in place of uh, X variable, you can put any name, any real object, like you can go for male of John or Alice of uh, female, female of Alice. But what is the conclusion here that uh, if, if, if uh, human of X, if particular X is a human, then that X can be male or can be female. In conventional semantic network, we cannot express clausal form of logic. That is the shortcoming of semantic network. R. Kowalski and his colleagues in 1979 proposed an extended semantic network, ESNet. It combines the advantages of both logic and semantic network. We have seen logic, first order predicate logic, the clausal forms of the statements we saw and we also saw the semantic network and semantic network uh, cannot fully um, depict the clausal form of a logic for that purpose the researcher kowalski proposed an extended semantic network. He has extended semantic network and named it as extended semantic network. And he com combined advantages of both logic and semantic networks. All right, let us look at uh, what a semantic network is. In this, uh, extended semantic network is much powerful representation as compared to logic and semantic network. In extended semantic net, the terms are represented by nodes, similar to as it is done in conventional network. Terms, terms are represented as nodes. Like this humans, male, female. Constant, variable, and functional terms are represented by constant variable and functional nodes. We have got uh, the nodes that uh, shows terms or concepts. And we also have got nodes that shows constant variable and functional terms. And these are represented by constant variable and functional nodes. Binary predicate symbol in clausal form is represented by labels on arcs of SNET. This you see here, this is the label. If, 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 if you say that love, John, comma, Mary, this is in clausal form, John, love, Mary. How do you represent this in the form of a network? You write John as one node, Mary as another node, and there is a relationship. There is a uh, arc showing uh, the uh, whatever the you know predicate is. 
here it, it 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 says the love so the atom of the form john love mary is an arc this this arc labeled as love with its two ends representing john and mary and the direction of arc this this is known as arc or link arc or link this indicates the order of arguments of the predicate this this is our predicate in the logic clausal form that you are converting it to semantic net in this semantic net uh, we got these two nodes and this one the link or the arc and this predicate is as a label of the link or the arc all right conclusions and conditions of clausal form are represented in es net by different kinds of arcs arcs are of different kinds in in a semantic net we had only one kind of arc just a solid line whereas in es net to better represent the uh, predicate in clausal form uh, it it has got uh, different kinds of arcs okay the arcs denoting conditions are drawn with dotted arrow line that dotted arrow line is the arc arcs denoting conditions condition we looked at one condition if john likes someone what does he do he gives an apple so that is conditional uh, statement the arcs denoting conditions negative items are drawn with dotted arrow lines these arrow lines are dotted and these are called denial lines uh, while the arcs denoting conclusions positive item are drawn with continuous arrow lines if if something is negative if the condition is negative it is negative atom means not suppose if it is not and and consider that if it is positive positive means there is no not for positive the lines are called as assertion lines which is a solid line and for negative it is a dash line for example the clausal representation or or rule x is grandfather of y this is implied by x is father of z comma z is parent of y how can you represent this in the form of a uh, es net representation x is grandfather of y this is positive means here this part this one and these two are negative in the sense that uh, whatever is there on the right side this side x is father of z and z is parent of y that uh, uh together represents that x is grandfather of y grandfather xy is the consequent conclusion and these are the conditions this is known as consequent or conclusion and this this uh, right side statement is known as antecedent or condition look at here the condition is in dashed line and the uh, conclusion is in solid line this is antecedent or condition
a clause another clause x male comma x female implied by x human what is antecedent and what is uh, uh, con con consequent consequent is this this side is consequent this side is antecedent how do you write antecedent in dashed line this is antecedent in dashed line and this this side is consequent in solid line what are the inference rules inference rules are embedded in the representation itself let us discuss some of the inference rules the representation of the inference for every action of giving there is an action of taking first one if it is said that john likes mike and has given an apple what does it implies what we can infer in fact that mike is liked by john and has uh, received an apple from him so we have got uh, for every action of giving there is an action of taking if someone is giving means another one is taking and this interpretation of this rule is that event of taking action is a function of event of giving if if event of giving giving is uh, uh, is happening it uh, it uh, implies that there is an event of taking and in esnet representation functional terms such as f of x is represented by a single node this is f of x by a single node f of x action f of x performing an action um uh, of take x is uh, doing an action of give because this is an antecedent it is in dashed line it is consequent it is in solid line and uh, this one uh, is uh, represented in esnet in this format because if here you have got action action f of a comma take when you have in like this it means f of x is one node take is another similar thing is shown here in figure 7.6 there is another inference rule that an actor who performs taking action is also the recipient of this action and is easily represented in clausal logic here e is the recipient of x implied by e is the action take e is taking the action and e is the actor of x some object how to represent this in the form of esnet e x actor e is the actor of action a x this one then uh, e is the action mm, which 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 includes take e is the uh, action which is take uh in uh, suppose if you if if i place here mic mic take no not in place of e sorry recipient e of x mm -hmm. e is the event x is mic which is implied by 
event e action is take event e actor is x here e is actor of e is an event x is an actor e is an event take is the action uh, which denotes that e is the recipient of x what is x x is uh, the actor so in, in in this example the actor here is a recipient Uh, that an actor who performs a taking yes actor is a recipient means the one who is taking action not doing action in earlier example we saw that the actor was uh, the one who was giving in this case the actor is uh, the one who is taking the action all right example let us look at an example represent the following clauses in esnet what are the clauses recipient e comma x implied by action e comma take comma actor e comma x this just now we saw how it is e is object uh, now the object of e is this should be capital e the object of e is apple the action of e is take the actor of e is john so how to represent that here it is showing the esnet representation of that clausal form of logic john is the actor of event e apple is the object of event e you see here recipient recipient of e comma x implied by action e comma take actor e comma x then what are the objects object of e is apple object of no action action of e is take actor of event e is john how are you representing all this this first uh, uh, e uh, the actor of e is x this part this part is here the action of e is take this part is here this to get together is antecedent and what is uh, the consequent to this the consequent to this is the whole part of this what we are writing is take a is e is action is take is actor is john is object is apple what does this means this means that x <laughs> x is the recipient of this uh, event e this uh, whole part e okay to uh, to differentiate between capital e oh, okay that's why they have given this 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 as a small e this is capital e this this part antecedent this is small e so recipient part is this this entire thing is recipient part 
in recipient part you have e that represents object e that represent action e that represent actor all are written here as e and then this is this here it is e uh, take e is taking so e and take there is a uh, link and then what take it is that entire thing you have uh, elaborated here by using all these predicates all right that is uh, one example another one the hierarchy links is a inst part of of semantic network are also available in extended semantic network we can say that uh, two legs are part of human what is the interpretation of this uh, uh, representation it is that for every human there exists two legs which are part of that human for every human there exists two legs which are part of human and what uh, if there is any contradiction uh, it is denoted here p is part of x this conclusion p is part of y is condition where y is linked with x y is a link y is a x p is a part of x p is a part of y if you recall one is uh, uh one is uh, this uh, antecedent one is consequent here con for consequent you have this solid line for antecedent you have this dashed line such kind of representation is contradictory and hence there is a contradiction in yes no here there is a contradiction because it is said p is a part of x as well as part of y this is denoted in esnet as the contradiction all right um, i think we should study this deduction in extended semantic network this is also a big topic to in next class we will look at this any doubts students deductions okay then